Hey guys, what's up? Force from Force StarCraft 2 Strategy here, taking a look at another Terran strategy today. In this strategy replay, our Terran player is Cloud, and our Zerg opponent is Dark Force. Gonna go right into Cloud Vision. So what we're gonna be taking a look at today, guys, is going for a Hellion Thor build. A lot of people have been asking me to take a look at some builds incorporating Thor, so that is what we'll be bringing to you today. Uh, so essentially what we're gonna be starting out with is getting some Hellion Harass, um, trying to contain your Zerg opponent somewhat, and then moving into teching up to Thors and getting the level upgrade, the weapon level upgrade for them, uh, can be a very strong and solid build. Right from the get-go, a few things to uh, note. Uh, clearly, we are playing a Zerg opponent here, and this is on Scrap Station. Now, with this very wide ramp, it's a smart idea to block off as soon as possible. I mean, truth of the matter is, against Zerg, you should be dropped blocking off almost immediately anyways because that threat of speedlings running into your base can be very dangerous um, but this is you are very susceptible on this map because it is such a large ramp you actually need a second production building at the front um, in order to in order to block it off quickly as opposed to needing one production building and two supply depots um, so it can be very threatening you always have to worry about something like a six pool here um, you can obviously still be easily prevented when scouted but it's still can be pretty daunting. Uh, taking a look at the build order real quick, we started off with that 10 supply depot, followed up with the 12 barracks, and then a 13 refinery. Now moving out our scout here, going to check out our opponent's base, see exactly what's going on. We're going to see if we're going to be seeing any sort of fast expansion or any sort of early zerglings or fast techs up to banelings. Those are the things we really need to worry about on this map, so we're going to check them and try to see precisely what our zerg opponent is doing here. Um, back of the base here, again, fully saturated that refinery. Barracks has now come up. We're going to be training a Marine and changing this to an Orbital Command immediately. So moving into our opponent's base, what we see thus far, uh, nothing too exciting. Spawning pool just going down. Seems a little bit late. It is, in fact, a little bit late, so you do want to go ahead and check the fast expansion after that point. Um, regardless, you should check the fast expansion whether or not you think what they're building is late, but as you can see, they are in fact going for that quick expansion, so we, we were correct in that assumption. Um, because of this, their spawning pool is a little late, so you don't have to worry about Zerglings quite as quickly, um, and seeing that fast gas also tells you that he intends on teching up to something that's gas intensive, whether it be speedlings, banelings, roaches, or getting a quick layer for some mutilists. So just be aware of those possibilities, that's basically what you need to be looking to do. Back in the base here, we have started our factory. Now, we did put that down at 18 supply shortly after our orbital command started building. It's basically once we got that first 100 gas from that refinery, we dropped that factory down. Now, with our next 50 gas, we're going to be getting a reactor here in the barracks. Because, again, like I said earlier, we're going to be going from a early Hellion harassment into a Thor build. So, we're going to want that reactor to get those Hellions out very quickly. Uh, basically, we're going to look to get between four and six Hellions out at the beginning of the game, do some harassment, and then switch into Thors. Um, so that reactor should be done just about the same time as this factory is. Um, and basically, we started building those at about the same time. Um, if possible, do them almost immediately next to each other. Obviously, this is going to be dependent on the gas that you have, because you do need 50 gas for this reactor and 100 for the factory. <laughs> Um, as you can see, we do have some Zerglings coming from our Zerg opponent. Shouldn't be much of a problem, though, because we do have this full wall off with the Marine here. Um, also, going for this fast expansion, this is something that you can definitely do with Hellion Harassment. Um, Hellions can be so dangerous to a Zerg player early in the game. It's so easy for you to do damage to their economy as well as their early game light unit, which is the Zergling. Um, it can really put you in a good position to be able to fast expand pretty easily. So we're going to begin this command center. We dropped that at about 21 supply. Um, second refinery coming in as well. We put that down at 27 supply. And that armory at 28 supply. Because again, once we're done with these early Hellions, we are, of course, going to be switching to those Thors. So we're going to need that armory. So now that we have the second refinery up, we're going to get a, be able to have enough gas to support the Thors that we're going to be getting. Um, and once that armory comes up, we're just going to go ahead and switch this factory from the reactor to the tech lab that we built here in our barracks, and just going to switch that up and start getting the Thors out. So again, just starting the game out with some early Hellion harassment. We don't really want to move out just with two quite yet. We'd prefer to move out with four. Um, so as you can see, that is precisely what Cloud's doing. Um, that is what I suggest you do as well. You're going to be much more effective with four Hellions than just the two. Also, it's a lot easier for a, a group of Zerglings or Speedlings to surround two Hellions than it is four um, because it's three shot uh, per kill. So with just two, it's, it's a lot harder for you to just stop, shoot, and actually take anything out. But with the four, it's actually quite easy. So that's basically the reason behind doing so. 
Now back at our base here, uh, we have started researching our first Thor again. After we got those four initial Hellions, either four or six, whatever you prefer. Um, after we got those four initial Hellions, we switched these out. The uh, barracks we put on the reactor, the factory is now on the tech lab. Building that Thor, obviously the, the armory has finished at this point. Coming out with our second factory at this point as well. Uh, now, as you can see, we moved in there, didn't do too much damage, but we did take out a decent chunk of Zerglings. Um, there's no reason to really all-in commit. If you feel like you can comfortably get into their mineral line and do damage, that is what you'd pref preferably like to be able to do. But if you feel like just moving in is just going to get your Hellions killed, then just poke at them, do what you can for damage. That's precisely what we had done here. Um, basically, just tried to do as much damage as we could to those Zerglings, and then just pulled back. And that's essentially what you're going to look to do. Um, don't really. Sa there's no reason to really sacrifice them because when we do an, our initial big push, we're going to be using the Hellions as well. So if you don't think you can do enough damage without losing the Hellions, then you can pull them back. But poking and prodding and trying to take out some of the units is definitely something you can do as well. Uh, it's, you're going to be in a really dangerous spot once they do go ahead and get some <coughs> roaches on the board. So you just have to be aware and looking out for that as well. Um, back at our base here, we have, as you've seen, moved that, we changed that um, command center into an orbital command, lifted it off, moved it into our natural, and we do have these two refineries up as well. Um, you're going to need to do this also, uh, aside from the fact that I said that you are able to expand early because of the fact that you're doing this Hellion harass, the other thing as well is in going for a Thor build, you're going to need a lot of gas, so getting this natural is almost um, essential in that. If you aren't able to get this natural up, uh, if your opponent's harassing you too much, then you're going to be sitting at more of a Hellion heavy build and less Thors. Preferably, you would like more Thors, of course. So, <coughs> just something to be aware of. Uh, moving our Hellions down here to check this gold high yield expansion. Um, that's a good idea as well. <coughs> the Hellions have such mobility. Definitely, you can use them to run around um, and try to scout out exactly what your opponent is doing. Do they have an overload run into the base? Try to prevent that. Um, obviously, the less information your opponent has, the better off you are. Um, if they see you going for this heavy Thor build, you would be in danger of them going for <coughs> some sort of heavy, heavy Zergling composition. Now, the problem is for that as a Zerg player is that these Hellions do very well against Zerglings. So that's actually precisely the reason that this is a good solid build. Um, having these heavy amount of Hellions coupled with the Thors, the Hellions are going to be able to quite easily take out the light units while the Thors can pretty much deal with the rest, um, especially if you bring up SCVs to assist in the battle. Uh, now as you can see here we actually have been moved up to our second weapon level upgrade. Um, that first one we started researching at about 41 supply. Um, and this is this is kind of going to be the push that we're looking to do. We're going to be looking to move out at once we about when when we finish the level two upgrade. Um, Thors are so effective with those weapon level upgrades, um, and if you can push out at about that time, you're going to do pretty much inflict massive amounts of damage here. Now in this particular map, Scribe Station, we are going to be taking advantage of these destructible rocks, uh, breaking them down to just get a quicker path to our opponent's base. Uh, walking Thors all the way around in this position can be very dangerous because they are so slow, it's going to be very hard for you to get back to your base if they happen to run into your base um, with any units as a counterattack. So try to cut back that run distance as much as possible, and again, in this particular example, we're doing so by breaking down these destructible rocks. Um, so we're just basically at this point going to be reinforcing with additional Thors, uh, having them rallied to the battle. Also, key note here, bringing up SCVs, this is going to be vital in your first push. Um, as you can see, again, that second weapon level upgrade is just about finished, and that's about when we're going to be pushing out as well. So bring up these bring up these SCVs, put them on auto repair by right-clicking the repair button, um, and basically they're just going to automatically repair any Thors that happen to get low. Uh, very, very effective, significantly bolsters the effectiveness of your Thors. Um, as you can see, the small amount of Thors was able to quite easily take out that large group of roaches, and that really was only possible because of the SCVs. So the SCV is in fact the hero in this case. Um, because of that repairability, it does so well with these heavy, 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 heavy units in the Thors. They have such a massive hit pool that having these SCVs on repair around them is going to, again, significantly bolster their effectiveness. Uh, definitely something I would suggest doing in almost all pushes with Thors. Even just like 5 or 10 SCVs, it's going to really be enough to really change the, uh, the course of the battle for you. 
Um, so, I mean, at this point, you know, we've pretty much taken out everything that they have. We do see that this expansion is over here. Uh, we are, of course, just going to keep on pushing on them. There's no reason to run all the way down to that expansion. Just move to the nearest one, try to induce as much damage as possible, and then uh, if you haven't lost your units by that point, then you can go ahead and move on to the next expansion. Um, again, these are such slow units, you don't really want to waste too much time walking around with them. Not, not, a, very mobile, not a very mobile force at all. Um, as you can see here, Dark Force does go ahead and call good game. Just realize this is a bit too much to handle. Uh, and we, in fact, have started researching our weapon level 3 upgrade. So, I mean, as you can see, these Thors can be very, very effective, coupled with the SCVs. Uh, those Hellions able to take out the light units pretty quickly. We did lose those very early on, but that is because he had a Roach heavy army. Um, had he had more Zerglings, those Hellions would have been very effective for us. Uh, so, once again, guys, this has been for StarCraft 2 strategy. Let's just take a look at that build order real quick before we wrap things up here. Started out with that 10 supply depot, followed up with a 12 barracks, and then a 13 refinery. So pretty standard in terms of opening. Uh, at 16 supply was that orbital command. 18 supplies when we got our factory. Now right about at the same time, we started attaching a reactor to our barracks that we had here. And then once the factory was done, we switched it out, starting the game out with that early harass, also getting that expansion for these additional refineries, uh, because we are going to need a lot of gas for these Thors here. And then basically we just started getting our Thors out. We got that second factory. Um, armory up, of course, because we need that to get those Thors. We dropped that armory at 28 supply. Started getting those Thors. Got that level weapon upgrade. Um, and basically pushed out about the time that that level 2 weapon upgrade was finished. Um, and as you can see, these Thors coupled with some SCVs can do inflict massive amounts of damage. Uh, definitely a good strategy. Basically the main thing to realize is that this Hellions being able to take out a lot of the late units and the Thors pr being able to pretty much deal with everything else um, can make this very effective against Zerg opponents. So yeah guys, again this has been for StarCraft 2 strategy. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning guys. So we're just going to continue this pressure, continue pushing out. We do have stim pack coming. We also have our additional barracks and our expansion command center is just about done now. So again, the entire point of this is pushing out, try to do some harassment, see what you can do for damage, but mainly it's to get that expansion up um, and basically do what we